Mr. President, so many buildings have collapsed in the past, and they've been brought to the attention of this Senate. But what we have never seen has been the sanction against people who did not do their duties. I'm a professional person. I'm an estate surveyor and valuer. And I know that we have building codes. We have development control and building regulation authorities everywhere, both in the states and at the federal level. The process of constructing a house starts from the design. The architect will make the design. The structural engineer will review, prepare and review the structural design, particularly for buildings that will go more than two, three floors high up. And before these plans can be approved for the building to be constructed, there must be checks to ensure that the building when erected can stand. Before we talk about the integrity tests on the materials that will be used for the construction of these buildings, very sadly, these things are never followed again. Yesterday, I saw on television the rubbles of this particular building in Joss that collapsed and killed these children. I wept because even the columns were irregular, showing that there was no supervision at all. Nobody supervised the erection of these buildings. No talk about checking the concrete test to ensure that the concrete so used and the reinforcements were to specifications and standards. So what we are witnessing here is that people who are employed to render these services, both in the approving authorities and in the construction and the supervision, they have abandoned their duties. And when people are killed, nobody is shown to have been humiliated or punished for professional negligence. So this one now, 20-something children, cut down at their prime because somebody refused to do his work. I would want us to pay more attention to dealing with people who do not do their work. Because this is the only way you can prevent these things from happening. The professional bodies should actually be put on notice. Council for the Regulation of Engineering, Council for all these uh, 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 built environment uh, professions. They cannot be there, and Nigeria will continue to be embarrassed that a simple building is built, it collapses, it kills people, and those people still retain their licenses. We cannot allow that to happen. So this is my contribution on the area of sanction. If we investigate this one, we have to know and seem to have applied the relevant sanctions. The uh, professional bodies should be, be able to get all those involved sanctioned and their licenses revoked. Because this one is a murder. 20 something children killed by poor construction of a two-story building. In a city like Joss, Joss is not a rural area. So while the construction was going on, people were seeing it, and nothing could be done to check the materials used in building this uh, school. So I joined my colleagues in supporting that appropriate investigation will be done. It has been, it's happened in Lagos, it's happened in several places but we don't have any feedback on the sanctions applied to the airing officials. So I sympathize with Dickett Plank and the people of um, Plateau State. Though those people who may have died may have come from different uh, parts. Because of the negligence of adults. But sir, like previous speakers have acknowledged, Incidents of collapse of buildings and life being wasted avoidably is very rapid across the country. I think with profound respect, Mr. President, that rather lament the consequences of 
official negligence. We should go to the root of the matter and tackle it at source. When I had the privilege of being a, a governor in a do state, now I want to speak from my experience, I found that in the Ministry of Works, they do have engineers, civil engineers, structural engineers, architects, qualities of yours, et cetera, et cetera. As a poor governor, you sit down there and you deal with the, the documents with regards to pricing, et cetera, et cetera. And in good faith, you set up a board to invite tenders and all manners of people tender. The results, sir, as I have seen in Nigeria, this is arguably one of the few countries where everybody is a civil engineer, everybody is a, is a civil engineering contractor. Even we see the Chiburua can put out Adams and Co. Civil Engineering Limited and bid for a sophisticated civil engineering contract. I think so looking at the laws, it is other federal laws that the Nigeria Institute of Architects is registered. It is other federal laws that the Nigeria Institute of Civil Engineers or of Engineers is registered. I think my brother he was honored recently by one of those associations. It is other federal laws that the Nigeria Institute of uh, Quality Surveyors is registered. And even the rate they are paid are prescribed by federal laws. Therefore, I believe we have jurisdiction to go to the source not just to lament the consequences, but to go to the source. But we amend the relevant sections of the act establishing these institutions. Quality surveying to deal with issue of inflation of uh, prices, structural engineering to deal with the issue of competence among its rank, and if things like this happen, we identify who were the supervisors are dealing with it. I think we are dealing with issues of corruption. One, if we one, are to call a spade a spade. One more now, minute. whereas these institutions exist, I'm going to round up now, they hardly do the job. Even here in Abuja, you see buildings and you wonder if they were done by competent structural engineers. Structures is extremely important. And I think we have made those laws in a way that everybody cannot wake up and set up a civil engineering company and begin to bid for contracts that is neither equipped to deal with, neither by reasons of competence or appropriate um, uh, uh, skilled engineering, structural engineering staff to deal with the issue of stability of the structure. So whereas I share everything that has been said, which in this case is within the competence of subnationals, but what we can do as a national parliament that regulate the various uh, institutions is to see what we can do to tinker with the law such that if you design a building and you are obliged to supervise the construction, should the building collapse within a certain number of years, you are liable not only to withdraw your license, you are liable to prosecution. Again, my sympathy to the people at the government of Plateau State. Thank you. For the sponsored by my very good friend, Senator Lange. Decade. Mr. President, this incident is too many. This has happened in Lagos. This has happened in Orocha. It happened here in Abuja. Mr. President, it's high time for us to take drastic action so that uh, we can save uh, lives of innocent Nigerians. Mr. President, most of these buildings had engineers that supervise the construction. And the architects that also designed this building. Contractors were also uh, there, and they did the construction. Yet, there were defects, and these defects were not you know, taken seriously. So I'm of the view that any building that collapsed the architects that supervise the construction of their building, the building engineers that supervise the building should be brought to book. Probably this is the only way we can stop this from happening. 
Uh, Mr. President, we have to save lives, of, lives and properties of people. Uh, millions of Naira has been lost, and hundreds of lives of people have perished because of uh, negligence, professional negligence of some individuals. Mr. President, we should punish those individuals. So in, support, in supporting this motion, I urge my colleagues to also uh, strictly suggest punishment for the engineers, for the architects that supervise the buildings. I so second, Mr. President. Now you wake up in the morning very happy to send your child to school. And mid-afternoon, they reported that that child is no more. And you probably did not even see him that day. Probably you went to work, and that's the end. And, and this tragedy happened when the students were writing exams. And trying to decipher and trying to get more explanation at that site, we found out, sadly, that there was signal. There was signal that that building was collapsing. Uh, and, and therefore, in my opinion, the governor was in UK that time, but he had to cancel everything and return shortly after to commensurate with the family, a proper panel has been set up. My prayer, Mr. Senate President, is that this pro panel should not be a typical Nigerian pro panel where probes are made, and coincidentally, at the end of the day, nothing actually comes out of the probe. This probe set up by the governor should be thorough and professional, and anybody no matter how highly placed in that society or community found to be negligent to the cause of these kids. None of these kids who are tall was more than 18. And that is terrible. And therefore, any person found to be negligent in either the military master plan the owner of the school, I think, should not be spared. And I think it is important that all of us, as parents, all of us, as Nigerian citizens, should commensurate, commensurate with the families of the bereaved and pray that that should never, ever happen in this country again. I so second. With those that lost their loved ones in this tragic, tragic incidents that occurred uh, in respect of uh, the collapse of the Saints Academy School building in Jaws. Mr. President, this incident is one too many. It's occurring every day in all parts of this country. Yes, one may argue that it's not within our purview to debate this matter on the floor of the Senate. But it has become very pertinent, very necessary that uh, we should learn our voices so as to bring to an end, total end, to these kind of you know, situations where people die every day in this country. It's within the purview of the sub-nationals to tighten their oversight operations to make sure that all that is necessary, you know, the um, planning departments, uh, all the agencies involved in ensuring that uh, there is sound regulation in respect to the construction of buildings, they should do their work. Yes, FCT is dealing with this matter because it's 
the area that we have oversight on, uh, where the assembly of the FCT, I can see that the FCT is now taking actions, necessary actions, to deal with this matter. It is therefore necessary that we extend our zeal to make sure that all is done to stop this kind of uh, situations happening in this country by urging our subnationals to do something about it. Before now, we used to see how serious the regulatory bodies in the states were doing to make sure that everyone that embarks on building any property is properly oversighted from the uh, stage of uh, putting together the plan. We could see then that uh, the agency responsible will always make sure that uh, the plan, plans were properly done. And they visit these sites on a daily basis to make sure that the right thing was done. But now, I think the oversight operations are no longer the way they used to be. So we call on the governments you know, of the states to tighten you know, the regulations involved in you know, building construction so that we will not be seeing all these things happening. It is sad that uh, we're having these situations everywhere in this country. But Please, let's work together. Subnationals should stand up. We know they are doing very well, but let them do more to make sure that uh, we bring to an end this kind of uh, tragic incidences. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senator Oshimori. Big and brother, Senator Plank, over the sad loss of uh, this young uh, I finished. I finished. Uh, I children I who had the misfortune of uh, being killed under the collapse uh, building. I have listened to the emotions poured out by my colleagues in respect of this tragedy. But one important uh, aspect of the situation that has not been addressed is the cost of building materials, which may have given rise to the spate of collapsed buildings in this country. For long as the cost of building materials remain high, people will cut corners. How much does a bag of cement cost now? Almost 10,000 naira, which speaks to the state of our economy. So as a parliament, I will suggest that something serious should be done towards the direction of uh, mitigating the rising cost of building materials at this moment, so that we can control incidences of building collapse in this country. I once again sympathize with the people of Plateau State over the sad Member. loss of their Member. children under these avoidable uh, circumstances. Like the Thank you, Mr. Senate President, President, distinguished colleagues. Thank you. By all the senators from Plateau, Senator Mwatkon, Senator Simon Lalong, and Senator Dickett Lang, I read, the Senate notes that on Friday, 12 July 2024, it was a story of holocaust of unquantifiable magnitude in Plateau North Senatorial District as a two-story building of Sen Academy School, Busabuji, in just North local government area, one of the local government areas of Plateau North Senatorial District collapsed, thereby killing not less than 24 students and staff members, while more than 100 Victims were rescued from the debris and at, from the debris with bodily injuries of virus degrees. Senate notes with utmost sadness that it was a depressing sightseeing as healthy and agile children who left home to write their examinations in the said school were unfortunately returned to their parents as dead bodies. Senate notes further that this ugly incident of building collapse had been a recurrent decimal in Nigeria as a result of poor workmanship, substandard building materials, and constructional standards leading to wanton destruction of precious lives and virus properties worth hundreds of millions of naira. Senate notes too that despite such incidences, Investigation and researches always, are always put 
put upon to verify these poor and unprofessional works done had never resulted to any meaningful punitive measures meted on meted or defaulters. Hence, the recurrence of the activities of quack practitioners taking advantage of eager and willing owners to save costs. Accordingly, Senate to resolve to urge the federal government and all relevant government agencies to immediately put necessary structures and apparatus in place to halt construction failures and bring to book all those violating laid down procedures for, the construct for constructional activities. Two, urge the federal government to investigate the such incident and bring to book anyone connected with putting up a shabby structures of the Sen Academic School Buzabuji that collapsed and killed those innocent children in Plateau North Senatorial District. Three, further urge the national emergency agencies and all other agencies of government to mobilize relief and rehabilitation materials to those many families whose victims of this catastrophe to help them cope up with their losses. Four, urge the Federal Minister of Health and other relevant government agencies to immediately move to Plateau North to give medical aid to the survivors of the set building crash to aid their speedy and quick, quicker recovery and also cushion the devastating effect of the affected families. Senate observe, observe a minute silence in honor of those, our beloved children and staff that lost their life in this ill-fated incident. I thank you, my, my, the Senate President, and my dear colleagues for this opportunity. The, the, we, the, the nation woke up to realize the loss of so many souls who were indeed future leaders and those that would have inherited all the efforts of our present generation. There is no doubt that everybody is in sympathy and nobody is opposed to this motion. So I want to thank the senior Senator Plank for bringing this to the fore. Uh, on behalf of the Senate, I had already condoled with His Excellency the Governor of Plateau State, uh, Governor Caleb, and also the Bong Pong Just, and many of the traditional fathers who were in the chambers to partake in the public hearing on the livestock bill. So we'll go straight to the prayers. Urge the federal government and relevant government agencies to immediately put necessary structures and apparatus in place to halt construction failures and bring to book all those violating laid down procedures for uh, in respect of construction activities. Those in support of prayer, I want to say aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. Prayer two. All the federal government to investigate this sad incident and bring to book anyone connected with putting up the shabby structures of the St. Academy's uh, school, Buza Buji, that collapsed and killed those innocent children in the Plateau North Central District. I, I think there should be a slight amendment. Anybody? Anybody? Mr. Mr. President, I yes. think you should. Oh, and, um, and thank all my colleagues who have contributed uh, to this. Uh, and also the, and thank you also for the additional prayers. And then for the condol with the government and good people of uh, Plateau State and all Nigerians. Because like Senator Ome said, uh, this, uh, the death of these children, if taken uh, uh, one by one, the identities of the children would definitely include an Igbo man, because it's very sure that the Igbos have spare parts industries in, uh, in Plateau State, and, the, and the children who, uh, their children who want to go to school. So I want us to condole with all Nigerians, sympathize with the president, Bola Tinubu and all Nigerians over the tragic incidents in Jos, not limited to Plateau State alone, but to the whole nation, and pray that God will uh, accept 
the souls of these children and then condole the families. And at the same time, uh, we must also, as the Senate, take measures to ensure that we enforce these resolutions to avoid further loss of lives through building collapse in Nigeria. This is one incident too many. May we now rise for one minute silence in honor 